World of Tanks E100 equipment. This vehicle is the E100. I chose my equipment just because I didn't want to pay for it. I just picked whatever was in my garage, in my inventory. But I'm going to tell you definitely, if you have a really good crew, I would go with vents, the vent directive, and the food consumable, which is chocolate. You really don't need the fire extinguisher or the large first aid kit because it's unlikely that you're going to have crew injuries uh, with this type of vehicle. So in terms of equipment, you don't want the muffler and you don't want the camo net because you're always going to be spotted. You're not really going to be able to hide from anybody. You really don't want the binocular telescope. You have to be stationary for this to work. And it only really works well if there's lots of enemy vehicles in the game or if there's only one other vehicle in the game and you're waiting for him to come looking for you. Very limited use. Uh, coded optics, it gets you an additional amount of experience because you're going to be spotting a little bit more per battle. But I really don't recommend coded optics. I would recommend getting crew members that have recon and situ situational awareness. And the reason why is because when I go through my service record and look at my heavy tanks, they don't do that much spotting. Additional grousers and turbocharger is good, especially for frontline, where you have to do a lot of driving or for large maps. I would definitely go with a turbocharger. And the reason why is because the plus four kilometers is really beneficial. I would really like to have that extra power. The spall liner and the improved hardening and the modified configuration, I just use two repair kits. Uh, if you don't use two repair kits, that will help you with your repair speed. Now, vents, I would definitely recommend. And the reason why is because vents with the directive, with the food consumable, and with all your crew skills will give you the benefit of a gun rammer and the gun laying drive and some of the other equipment. That's how much of a bonus you get out of it. So then a lot of players are going to say, well, of these remaining four, which one do you use? Gun laying drive helps. You have to be stationary. It's good for autoloaders because they tend to be stationary and then they fire four or five shots. And it's better over a longer distance. However, the amount of time you save is very small. You see aim time says 2.17. You're going to save 0.1 seconds or 0.2 seconds. A gun rammer can save you one second. This saves you 0.1. It obviously makes sense that you go with a gun rammer. And with that extra second, you just start aiming 0.1 seconds sooner. You get the benefit. You get additional aiming time. You get higher DPM with the gun rammer. I definitely would go with the gun rammer instead of the gun laying drive. You don't snipe long distance with this vehicle, so the gun laying drive, you don't get the benefit. You get the most benefit the longer you have to wait, the further the enemy is. So then you've got the improved rotational mechanism, which gives you some benefit with the dispersion, and it lets you rotate your vehicle a little bit faster. But if you use a turbocharger, you're going to get that benefit. Or if you use additional browsers, you're going to get that benefit. So you've got two that are similar. Vertical stabilizer, you have to be moving. If you're stationary, it's no benefit. So if you've got a tank destroyer with no turret and it just sits there waiting for a target, vertical stabilizer doesn't help. It does help if you move, fire, reverse, or reverse, fire, and then go back forward. With this vehicle, the E100, you're going to do that, so the vertical stabilizer is a good choice. Also, 
vertical stabilizer gives you the best benefit immediately if you wait a long time before you fire no benefit and I'm gonna to explain to you why let's say it takes 10 seconds to aim and with the vertical stabilizer it takes only nine seconds to aim what if you fire 11 seconds later then the vertical stabilizer didn't help you because you aimed in all the way and then you still waited before you fired so what you do is you get the gun rammer when I play I don't go in after I'm already loaded I estimate the exact time that I'm going to be loaded and how long it takes to aim and I go in and I time it so that when it's finished aiming is when it's finished loading they both happen at the same time so if you use the vertical stabilizer with my method you'd have to go a tenth of a second sooner or two tenths of a second sooner so you can see that the vertical stabilizer gives you a very very small bonus in time number two you get the most benefit if you fire immediately if you go out and fire immediately because your reticle is a little bit smaller especially if you don't have to aim so if they're very enemies close to you you get a really good benefit it's good for hit and run now the improved aiming always works you always get a smaller reticle you get a smaller reticle if you pop out and fire and you get a smaller reticle if you sit and wait 10 or 15 seconds to aim so what I prefer is the smaller reticle with the improved aiming I recommend improved aiming a lot of people won't do it I think they're wrong they can do whatever they want also it's going to help you sniping at long distance and you're going to be more accurate with a cupola or with weak points the gun rammer you can save one second or more in this case the gun rammer saves 1.1 seconds compared to 0.1 seconds for aiming I don't have it so it doesn't show it so the gun laying drive 0.1 seconds vertical stabilizer saves you 0.1 second or 0.2 seconds rotation mechanism saves you 0.1 second go with the gun rammer I recommend the improved aiming it's always going to give you a smaller reticle doesn't matter if you're sitting doesn't matter if you're moving and I recommend improved ventilation because it also always helps you whether you're moving or sitting. I recommend gun rammer, improved aiming, and improved ventilation. I recommend the turbocharger. Definitely improved ventilation should be your first choice on almost every tank, especially if you have a lot of crew skills because you're going to get benefits from all those crew skills also. In terms of grousers versus turbocharger, turbocharger gives you the top speed. What a grouser is, is it's like a grip on the tread. So it lets you spin around. It's like cleats on shoes. So it's good for spinning and it's good for muddy terrain. If you put both together, you're going to get better performance, but a smaller gain. You pick one or the other based on what you have and in terms of like the improved hardening in the small liner this vehicle has heavy armor so I don't recommend the small liner because there, it's gonna have little benefit and the improved hardening and modified configuration if you have repair kits it nullifies these it is good for suspension durability but then again you get that from you know your repair kits gonna help you with that also so that's my recommendation um, if I had unlimited money I would put vents 
and then I would put a gun rammer, and then I would probably put the turbo, because I like to move around quickly. And then I would put the vent purge and the food consumable and fire lots of gold rounds. Now remember, with the gun laying drive and the vertical stabilizer and the improved aiming, only useful with tanks that are far away, difficult to aim at, or higher tier tanks, better armored tanks. This is already a higher tier tank. If you're firing gold rounds, the benefit from this goes down dramatically because the gold's going to penetrate even if you aim poorly. And number two, you really don't get a benefit from any of these if you're shooting against lower tier tanks, light tanks, SPGs, medium tanks, weakly armored tanks. You only get the benefit from a few enemy vehicles in the game that are well armored. So don't put too much emphasis on anything that makes the reticle smaller. It's a 0.1 second benefit. And look at how much it costs, 600,000 silver for a 0.1 second benefit. Go with the higher DPM, the overall performance, and the faster speed. And now think about it. If you have faster speed, let's say this got you into position 0.1 second faster. It gave you 0.1 second more time to aim. Or... If you rotated a little bit faster, this is for rotation, for movement. So if you're getting there faster, you're going to start aiming faster, which means the benefit from this is counteracted. Uh, so let's say you get there 0.1 faster, and this saved you 0.1 aim time, then just get the turbocharger. This is nullified. In fact... I mean, it doesn't make it useless, but you can save time by spinning and aiming quicker. You can't improve your gun load time by spinning faster, but you can improve your aim time because you get there faster. You have more time to aim, perhaps before the enemy disappears or gets taken out of the game. Okay, those are my recommendations. If you have any questions or comments, please post below.